Hello, this is Bryce Hementhal, and I'm a certified SOLIDWORKS application engineer from Go Engineer. In today's Quick Tips video, we will be talking about SOLIDWORKS electrical schematic and how to import DWG symbols from other applications into SOLIDWORKS electrical. So we'll go ahead and start off by jumping into SOLIDWORKS electrical, going to the library tab and selecting the symbols manager. And here we'll go ahead and import DWG files. I can go ahead and add a folder and pick all the symbols in that folder, or I can just add a file and select which files individually I want to import. I'll go ahead and select this file and hit next. And we have one symbol that's being added, and I can go ahead and choose a configuration. I'm going to go ahead and talk about these configurations in a couple minutes, but that's where I would choose it if I created the configuration. Now we'll go ahead and pick what type of component it is. And if you look over to the right, it's a normally closed push button. So I'll say it's an emergency push button. And now I'll put, enter a description for this symbol. And I'll say this is my normally closed emergency push button. And I like to throw these in a certain library so that I know I've created it. So I'll throw this in test. Next, we could pick a manufacturer and a manufacturing part if we want this symbol always to be a certain manufacturer and part number. And I could go ahead and also specify the root mark if I wish it always to be C or a certain letter. But I'll go ahead and hit next. This is where we do the attribute mapping. So I looked at the previous schematic and I realized that the de device ID 1 was the manufacturer. So we'll go ahead and do that. And the device ID 2 was the manufacturer part number. So we'll go ahead and select that. So what will happen is these will be replaced by our manufacturer part and manufacturer. I'll also do the same for our description here, and OK. And I realized that these last two items here were nothing, so I'll just go ahead and delete them so they don't get transferred over to our symbol. We'll go ahead and hit Next. So now here, I can go ahead and specify a configuration. This is very beneficial if I'm going to be importing ton of symbols um, over and over and over. What it will do is take all the attribute mapping I specified here, and next time I come and select that configuration, it will automatically fill that information out for me. But I'll go ahead and say I don't want to save this one. And what it will do is import that symbol. And I, the reason I like to use that library is now I could just search based on that library. And I'll go ahead and search by that test library. And there's that normally closed emergency push button. And if you look, some of the attributes got mapped over correctly. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reorganize it a little bit. And for the ones we didn't map over, what I can do is just go ahead and either leave them, they're going to be static text, or I can go ahead and delete them if I wish to do so. And that's what I'll go ahead and do with this extra attributes we have. And I'm just going to do a little bit of cleanup here. And now what we'll go ahead and do is we'll come up to our Edit Symbol tab and add a new circuit. So we could specify the number of circuits and the type of circuit. Since this is a normally closed emergency push button, I'll say I want to get a normally closed button. And we can also specify if we want a disconnectable symbol, a passer, passing symbol, hyperpassing, or hyper hyperpassing. I'll go ahead and select that circuit and say I want to put a connection point. And by right clicking, we can rotate where this little club goes. And this club is what it's going to do is trim the wires up to this point where I place it. So I'll go ahead and do that one more time for the other side. Right clicking again to rotate it. So now what we can do, since we mapped over some of the attributes here, we can go ahead and insert the rest of the attributes I wish to be included when I insert this symbol on a schematic. So I'm going to go ahead and specify I want the mark. Let's grab that tag right there. And let's go ahead and grab one more. Let's get the location description. have to hit that checkbox and hit OK. And then I could place it right wherever I want. You'll notice that the size and text format from the other ones was carried over from the previous symbol. So if I wish to change it or resize it, I can do so if I so please. But we'll go ahead and show an example when I insert this symbol into a schematic. So we'll go ahead and insert this symbol. And I'll grab that normally closed emergency push button. And I can also search by library if I wish to do so, make sure I grab the right one. We'll go ahead and place this on my schematic. And let's go ahead and pick a manufacturer part for this after I change the route real quick. And we'll go ahead and search normally closed buttons. I'll grab this Lacron normally closed emergency push button. And you'll notice it maps over correctly, but I don't really like where everything's placed. So let's go ahead and edit the symbol. 
And right here from inside the schematic, what I can do is I could right click the symbol, go to symbol, and open symbol. And it, now from here, I could go ahead and make some changes to it. Um, I want the, t the mark to come up here. And let's throw this description down here. And let's throw the location right here. So now we'll go ahead and jump back into the schematic real quickly. Let's go ahead and save this symbol first, though, and close it. And you'll notice nothing changed. That's just because we have to update the symbol real quickly. So right click and then say update. And there you go. Thank you for watching that quick tips video from Go Engineer for SolidWorks Electrical Schematic. When you need to import those DWG symbols from other third party applications into SolidWorks Electrical. Have a great day.